Hello, I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist and I've specialized in psychopharmacology for over 30 years, evaluating people and deciding if they need medication and what medication they need. I went to Georgetown Medical School and I did my residency at Columbia Presbyterian and, uh, and recently I've added TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, to my armamentarium. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the different types of antidepressants. The SSRIs <coughs> were a revolution in psychiatry. Uh, these, this means uh, specific serotonin reuptake inhibitors. When Prozac came out in 1988, some of us realized within a few months that this was completely different. With the older medications called tricyclics, people had a lot of side effects. They might have a decreased memory, a dry mouth, weight gain, and sometimes the treatment was worse than the illness, especially if it was a mild depression. And with Prozac, one might have 50% of patients do really well with almost no side effects. And then you might have another 25% that do really well with some side effects. And then, and then maybe another 25% that either didn't respond or the side effects were a big problem. But uh, it was a revolution. There was so much fewer side effects and so easy to take. So for the first time, also, you could treat mild depressions. With the tricyclics, it wasn't hard to treat severe depression because the patients were desperate because they were in such a severe depression, they didn't mind a lot of side effects. And I think that what happened with Prozac, that it quickly got legs, as they say, in the newspaper business, because a lot of articles started coming out about it. And some of these were because depression is so common, and some newspaper writer was on it and felt really good. And uh, so he would go to his boss and say, oh, I hear there's a new antidepressant. Would it be okay if I write about it? Not telling them that he himself had a good benefit from it. And so and more and more people started coming to me who were just mildly depressed. And in the past, these people hadn't come so often. Partly, I think, also, when people had a mild depression, and then they take a medication that seems mild to them because there's not much side effects to them, then they talk about it. So they go to a college reunion and, and people say, gosh, you look so much better, did you cut your hair? And the guy would say, no, I was chronically depressed all through college, and now I'm on Prozac and I feel wonderful. P people weren't as embarrassed about talking about depression if the depression was relatively mild and, and the side effects were minimal. So uh, many more people started to be treated. Now, a number of other SSRIs came out. Uh, Paxil, which is paroxetine, Zoloft, which is sertraline, Celexa, citalopram, Lexapro, s -citalopram. And, uh, and these work basically the same. However, if one doesn't work or one has excessive side effects, if you switch to another, you've got a fairly good chance it might work. Uh, if it doesn't, then one should move on to a completely different type of antidepressant. So how do SSI work? And what is the mechanism of action for them? Well, the mechanism of action seems to be that when you block the reuptake of serotonin, then more serotonin gets into the system. So 
a neuron re releases serotonin and then it goes across the synaptic space and hooks onto a bunch of receptors and then an electrical impulse goes down the next nerve. Now, once the serotonin has done its job, it gets taken up again by the first neuron and either reused or metabolized. When you block it from coming up, then you're going to increase the serotonin in the synapse and then supposedly raising uh, the serotonin tone is the reason you help depression. That's actually a lot more complicated than that because when you take a uh, serotonin medication like Prozac or Zoloft, immediately you've raised the serotonin dramatically in the synapse, but you don't really see benefit until 10 days. And then it's just a little bit of benefit. And uh, the dramatic benefit happens after three, four, five, six weeks. So something longer term is happening. And one of the things that is happening downstream is that BDNF, which is basically the growth hormone of the brain, it's, it's uh, name is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. What is serotonin? Serot serotonin is a uh, is an amino acid, and uh, and uh, and there's three neurotransmitters that seem overtly involved with depression: norepinephrine, dopamine, and and serotonin. And when these are increased, usually by blocking their reuptake, but also by other mechanisms, then, then they help depression. And serotonin has been, the serotonin uh, medications have been the most used in part because they also help anxiety. So if someone has a pure anxiety disorder and no particular depression, if you give them an SSRI, it's going to help their depression. I mean, help their anxiety. And they should start low and go slow because it often works at a low dose and you shouldn't be in a big hurry. And if you go fast, you may actually cause more anxiety if you get up too high too fast. The... Um, The next antidepressant. Before, before that, uh, what is the side effects for this? Oh, the side effects of uh, of the SSRIs are sometimes really minimal. One of the biggest problems is having a negative effect on on uh, one's sex life either reducing the libido in general, reducing erections, or reducing the ability to have orgasms, or all three, any, or any combination. And that happens at about 50% of people. So that's a gigantic headache for the doctor, because if you treat 100 people, that means you're going to have 50 that are going to be have, having this problem. You can get around the problem if you can lower the dose. And sometimes you can lower the dose by adding in some other medication like Welbutrin bupropion, which usually doesn't affect the libido at all. And if you can take a significant amount of that and then be able to lower the SSRI, then you may get the SSRI low enough that the sexual dysfunction is greatly decreased or hopefully gone. There's another type of antidepressant that's 
extremely similar to SSRIs, and they're called SNRIs. Just a moment. This is, this is going to be the next next. Oh. Next week. So, oh, so okay. For the SSRI, we finish? Say, I'm okay. Yes, we finish on, on it? Yeah. Um, you want to tell who, who, who is go, go, who going to be benefit of... Uh, you, uh, who going to be benefit of SSRIs? Who you usually... The only <coughs> 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 um, The SSRIs will benefit almost any depression. Uh, the main side effects, in addition to this possible sexual dysfunction, is that once in a while they'll make somebody sleepy, once in a while they'll make somebody agitated, and uh, a big problem is that a number of them make your appetite go up and then you gain weight. For example, uh, Zoloft sertraline, an average dose is about 100 milligrams and the maximum dose is 200. On 100 milligrams, people may not gain much weight or have much difference. But many people, if they go to 150 or 200, will feel so hungry they could just eat the whole table. And, uh, and, that, and that's a problem. Another problem is that uh, about half of of uh, people who suffer from depression are really slightly bipolar. And, uh, and it, which just means that their moods can cycle and maybe they have had some mild highs in the past. Maybe nothing that caused any trouble and doesn't fit a diagnosis, but just where they had periods of a few hours or days or weeks where they really developed a lot of enthusiasm for a new hobby or a a party they're arranging or a paper they're writing and then really focused on that with a lot of clarity of thinking and energy and they were able to push everything else aside to focus on this and that's an indication of uh, of a mild bipolar tendency which is completely different than manic depression and uh, these people often poop out on the antidepressants. So if they're taking an SSRI after a few weeks or more likely a few months and sometimes even a few years, it's no longer working. They take it off, they try something else, and they try it again, it still doesn't work. And a fellow named Jay Amsterdam from Philadelphia hypothesized years ago, a couple of decades ago, that people who had tried many antidepressants and failed were doing poorly because they tried so many antidepressants. We have always made the assumption that if people have tried a dozen different antidepressants over years and have done terrible, they've done terrible because they have such a treatment-resistant depression. But he said maybe it's the other way around it's because they've tried too many different antidepressants and that's somehow affected the receptors and made them treatment resistant. So many of us think that if you get a positive effect of some sort from an SSRI and your side effects aren't bad, maybe rather than switch to another one, you should add things on. There's number of things you could add on, like very low dose lithium, uh, cytomel, which is the thyroid hormone called T3, especially if the TSH is above 2.5. And, and there's a number of other things, and especially there's the Wellbutrin bupropion that you could add on. Um, okay.